Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a quiz app in Unity and welcome to episode 10. In this tutorial we are going to add the score system and we're also going to follow on from the last tutorial and create the sequence that allows us to move on to a new question. Don't forget, click subscribe and click on the bell icon as well. Stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So basically creating the score system and feeding onto the next question is all going to be done technically inside one script. I think it just kind of depends how you want to do it. Because at this point, there is a million ways that you can do one thing in Unity. Um, it just depends whatever you feel comfortable with. We're going to go with probably the easiest way of doing it. Um, so firstly, let's go into question generate script. And the key to this script is going to be the um, bool that we have right here, displaying question. We now need to set that to false to display a new question. So if we have a question on the screen, we're obviously somewhere down here and we've set the displaying question as true. I think technically we don't really need that here. So what we're going to do is refine our script a little bit. Let's take displaying question out of there and let's place it inside the initial if statement because we don't need to repeat it over and over if it's going to be the same outcome each and every time. So there's no point in those lines of code. So let's get rid of them. And there we go. So now it only runs the once, which is good for us. So once we change that back to false, it means a new question will be generated. So let's save that script and go to answer buttons. This is where we're going to create that sequence to basically give us more score or reset the score and move on to the next question. So it's all going to be done inside the answer button script. So we now need to add a variable for the score itself. So let's add public game object and we'll have current score. And obviously we're going to need an actual number to visually see that score. So we're going to need an integer. So public int and we'll just have it score value. So if we get a question correct, let's say we get five points. If we get it wrong, it resets to zero. So that means that every time we have played the correct sound effect, we can say score value plus equals five semicolon and what that's doing is it's adding five to whatever number score value currently is so if it's for example 15 it will add another five if you had just the equals it would make it equal to five but what we're doing is adding five to it so we can use that line of code once again and place it inside each of the correct answer sections Obviously, the inverse of that, we need to reset the score back to zero. So we can place it in there, but instead of having plus equals five, we just make it equals zero. Now, if you do want to subtract a value from the score instead of resetting, you would just have minus equals instead of plus equals. That's all you need to do. So let's take that score value again out of there. And, or rather copy it, I should say, and place it in there, place it in there, and also place it in here. Now, we'll have the void update back. Um, the reason being is because I don't want to have too many more lines of code just to update the score on screen. So what we're going to do is beneath those variables, we're going to go void update and I know we deleted it out before didn't we but it doesn't really matter we can always add it uh, let's delete private because it doesn't need to be private and what we're going to say is current score dot get component and in spiky brackets text because we're dealing with that text component again aren't we open close bracket dot text equals and if I recall it was score in capitals with a semicolon then a space and then quotes again and then plus 
and we have score value, semicolon, and save. So what this is doing is it is updating on our screen our current score value. So current score is the object which contains the word score and then the number, and score value has our actual score. So it will display on screen whatever score value is. So let's head back into Unity. All good. And now what we need to do is on master control, we need to add current score down here. And that is this item right there. And now if we press play and get the correct answer, we should see this increase to five. So Asia, score five, perfect. So we know the scoring mechanic works, but now we need to have the mechanic that moves us on to the next question. So let's head back into the answer buttons. Now, the key to this is going to be via a coroutine. So I want to wait for just probably a second, maybe two seconds before we move on to the next question, just to give ourselves a bit of chance to see that, oh, we got the right answer. What were the other answers? If we got it wrong, that kind of thing. So what we need to do is head down the bottom and create a coroutine. So I numerator next question. Open close bracket, open curly bracket. Now, like I say, we're going to yield, return new, because we want to wait for about two seconds, maybe. Wait for seconds. You don't have to wait for two, you can wait for one, half a second. It's, it's entirely up to you how you want your app to kind of flow. So two, semicolon. And then after that, we need to basically set everything back on after we've displayed the question, but we kind of need to get it all in sync, I should say. So let's establish what we need to do with these buttons. Firstly, we need to set them all back on. So here, where we've got these four lines of code, let's copy those, go down a couple of lines inside our coroutine and paste them. And instead of false, we need this to say true. Like so. And now what we need to do is we need to turn off all of the green or red indicators and turn on all of the blue ones. So that means that everything we turned on, we now need to turn off. So we may as well just take this one for starters. So answer A back green. Let's place that here and change it to false. And obviously we're going to need to do that with B, C and D. And it's just a case of copy and pasting and you can do it this way. Um, I always say that if code already exists in its simplest form, there's no point retyping out. You can always just kind of copy and paste and just make things easier. If code exists, just reuse it. So this is red. So answer A back red is also set as false. And here, so that's going to be changed to B, C and D. And now we need to set the blue ones on, which is the blue. So let's change that to answer A back blue. And that is going to be True. So here, all this is doing is resetting how the buttons look visually. So there's A, B, C, and D. Now, at the end of it, all we need to do is we need to say, question generate, give us a brand new question. So we can say, question generate dot displaying question equals false semicolon so what that will do is it will tell that question generate script to follow that sequence again and give us a new question so how do we get this next question working correctly well all we really need to do is once we have pressed a button and once we have worked with our score we now need to set active this little coroutine simple as that so I think it doesn't really matter um, whatever we do, because as long as we press the button, 
we need that coroutine to run. So we don't need to place it inside these if and else statements. We can just have them as an extra line of code in each method. So start coroutine and in brackets, uh, next question. Oh, close bracket, close bracket, semicolon. Take that line of code and place it inside the other three methods and save. And now head back into Unity. Before we go any further, let's just double check that this master control is gonna function correctly. So we've got everything in there. I think that should be okay. Uh, we do have the flow working, so we know the answers work. Um, so yeah, let's see if this sequence carries on and adds our score when we start getting them correct. Who is the brother of Luigi? Mario. It's generated the same question, that's why that's happened. So, we can see that something has gone astray here. Okay, so... The whole sequence has gone, it, it works, because obviously we can select a new question, but something has gone uh, astray. So let's check out what's gone wrong. So question display. Right, so I think I mentioned this quite a while ago, saying that we would have to move things uh, around. What we'll do here is uh, we need to update all of these. So what basically happened is we have generated a new question, but we haven't displayed that new question on the screen. We do need these to be on the screen. Now, best way of doing this is to place this coroutine inside the update and create a new bool to say, we've just created a question, please update it. So we will say public static bool, please update. Uh, by default, in fact, yeah, by default, we'll make that false, semicolon. So what we do is inside void update, if, oops, too many uh, brackets there. If please update equals false, then do the following. And that's going to be to start the coroutine. And also set please update as true. <clears throat> so now let's get rid of void start and the annotation because we don't need it. So essentially what's going to happen is this is going to do the exact same thing as void start. It's going to update, run this coroutine, and we'll see the question on the screen. So first, let's make sure that that does indeed work. So let's press play. And there we go. So that's displayed on screen. So it now means that when we have created a new question, so in question generate, we need to tell this script to display it. So we need to say, please update equals false. So down here, after we've got displaying question is false, display question, set it as true. We've generated our question. The very, very last line of code, let's put an annotation here, all, questions go above this line and then we'll say question display dot please update equals false semicolon and save so at that point we've generated the question and we've now told this script to read the information from that generate script so finally let's head back into unity let's press play and let's see the sequence as a whole. So Asia. How old is the world? Billions of years. Got a score of 10 now. Who is Luigi's brother? Mario. So let's go for a wrong answer now. Let's say six months. And it's wrong. But it still generates the new one. And there we go. This whole sequence will just keep going and going and going. So as long as you've put the correct answer in the correct place, it will work. Now, obviously it's generating the same question over and over because I only have a choice of five questions right now. Uh, obviously, if you've got hundreds or thousands of questions, you're not gonna generate the same question. And there we go, there we are, reset. 
So that is pretty much the sequence of events to make this whole app work. Next tutorial, what we're going to do is we are going to create the ability to save and load our high score. So let's say we got to 15 for our high score uh, and we lost. Whenever we close the app and restart it, it will say 15 was our best ever score. So until that next tutorial, thanks very much for watching, guys.